Hafadeguam. I'm Adriana Katero. This is The Greater Good, and I am joined here with two representatives with the uh, Farm to Table. We have Cassie, <laughs> Cassie Brady, who is the project director, and then Roland Santos, um, farm manager. Yes, Thank correct. you both for joining me, and I'm so excited to learn all about the initiative because, you know, we were just talking before, and I got excited thinking about sustainability and, yes. um, you know, the environment. So please tell me what Farm to Table is, just for those that don't know, and when it started. Right. Uh, well, we're a nonprofit organization that mm -hmm. started in 20. 11 um, and the ultimate um, mission was to support farmers any way we can um, and um, so it, it actually started by a one-year survey where we um, we surveyed about 30 different farmers mm -hmm. um, to you know learn what they're growing you know how much waste they have what they need and the biggest thing that we found was they have tons and tons of waste and okay. we were a little shocked um, and we also at that time I think Guam imported 95% of food. So we were like, why are we importing all this food when there's all this waste? Why don't we make more value added products? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, turning tomatoes into tomato sauce or more, you know, peppers into Denancy, things like that. So um, that led us to our big five year project um, from, let's see, I want to say 20. 2013 to last year 2018 and there was a like five-year plan right okay. exactly so there were a bunch of things we wanted to accomplish um, one was a kitchen partners program where it's it, kind of like a matchmaking service between farmers producers chefs um, you know trying to use more local produce instead of imported okay um, that was one aspect like intermingle exactly. <laughs> I'm thinking now I'm thinking like dating right. <laughs> mingling <laughs> Get to know your farmer. Yeah. Um, so that was one part of it. Um, another one was uh, the big one was to develop a CSA model um, organic farm, okay. experimental organic method farm. So in partnership with Department of Agriculture, we started that um, and started um, providing uh, what we call CSA boxes, community supported agriculture. Mm -hmm where we put together a box, kind of like a chopped box. You never know what you're going to get. Depends what's in season. Mm -hmm. um, Everything oh. local. Everything right, local. always local. local. Mm -hmm. We try and do, um, our specialty is greens, herbs, and we experiment with different um, specialty crops. Yeah, trying to diversify uh, all the produce here in Guam and um, mm -hmm. uh, what we see at the market. So mm -hmm. Right, yeah. so we, we put a, a box together, and some of it comes from our farm. Some of it comes from other farmers. Mm -hmm. okay. We also work with a lot of small hobbyist farmers or backyard growers um but uh so yeah we started that i like that that yeah. it's not just your farm you guys are trying to you know yes. we include want to everyone the right we want to support because the again we saw you know how much waste they have and we're like no you know we we want these for our csa boxes or we know a chef that wants something so um yeah that kind of goes hand in hand with the kitchen partners program i mean we could attest that uh we want the farmers to have more time at the farm to grow more to produce mm -hmm. more so one way we can help out the farmers is by uh, picking up their produce and selling it for them mm -hmm. rather than wasting uh, them wasting their time at the markets. Right. So we try to support a them. A lot of them have full-time jobs or don't have and a lot of help. And what if some of the farmers said it with this whole thing? I mean, I'm sure that they love it and they see all the benefits. Yeah, well, we, we tried to get them to join us at markets and, and different things like that, but we have learned that they need help with marketing and distribution. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the main thing, and that's what we're actually working on right now or other funding opportunities where we could help them um, you know, make um, or, or basically get their produce and they could stay on the farm um, and okay. farm and do what they love and do mm -hmm. the thing that, you know, interests them. And we want to kind of help, uh, you know, take care of the, some of the, the marketing and, and distribution, especially because it's a lot of small farmers mm -hmm. and um, it's, sometimes it's small quantities. About how many farmers do you work with? Over the, over <laughs> the projects, um, I want to say probably maybe 50, 60, 70. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not all consistent. Sometimes, you know, they, they move or, or well, they don't farm anymore. Also, depending on the produce, sometimes uh, there's a certain season for the produce that they, uh, uh, that they grow. So, you know, they might have like a little lull during um, these certain months. And then we go to another farmer who's actually producing something that, could, uh, that would be able to be produced at that time. So, uh, What's in season right now? Hmm. A lot of citrus. A lot of citrus. Ooh. Yeah, our CSA subscribers, uh, yeah, they're getting a, a lot of citrus right now, and we should be seeing... Um, we're seeing star fruit. We're seeing soursop uh, coming out. Um, yeah, we're kind of ramping root, root up towards... Crops. 
Hopefully we'll get mm -hmm. some dagu in, in the boxes. And dagu, and the taro, yams, yeah. things so like that. So like you said, so. these are like kind of surprise boxes though. So right. they don't know what they're getting when they open right. it. Right. Exactly. We try and Ooh, it's do so exciting. leafy <laughs> greens mm -hmm. and herbs, some fruits, some vegetables, and local eggs when they're available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right oh. before Thanksgiving, we put parsley and dill to kind of mix up their um, Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. Mm. So yeah, so we try to accommodate that. So where's your guys' farm located? Oh, we're in Mingilao, uh, okay. off a of dairy road. Okay, and you um you you keep it up for the most part. You're the manager, right? Yes, yes, yes. So tell uh, me what it's like to do that. A uh, lot of hard work. <laughs> a lot of hard work. Uh, we're dealing with uh, a lot of elements. Uh, very difficult to farm on Guam just because we have a lot of pressure from weather, uh, inconsistent weather. Mm -hmm. uh, we just received, uh, you know, we just had a storm uh, pass through. So it wasn't even a bad storm, but I know it affected a lot of farms with uh, the heavy rainfalls and things like that. So, you know, it's just the maintenance is probably half the battle, and then. Um, uh, what we try to do is we try to grow uh, crops that don't normally grow here, just try to diversify what we see at the market. So okay. um, it's it's definitely uh, an undertaking for sure, but uh, it's just it's what we love. And what are what yeah. are some of those crops? Uh, romaine lettuce, mm. uh, arugula, mustard greens, mm. kale. Um, last year we did a bunch of broccoli, so we were stoked on that. Um, uh, Chinese broccoli. Uh, burgundy long beans, mm -hmm. burgundy okra, um, we've done juliet tomatoes, black cherry tomatoes, tomatillos, yeah, we parsley, go dill, on, we go on. yeah, we, we try and experiment. Do you guys have hot peppers? All yes, kinds of we have, oh, we have wow. a little a little That was little always bit. like my struggle because I love to make salsa, but I never had the nice. right peppers, like yes. the spicy, spicy ones. Do you guys have? We, we do, yeah. and we also know a few yeah, other to come to the farm. farmers that have, yes. <laughs> So, you know, we uh, did some uh, bell peppers last year also, okay. um, mm -hmm. and I think right now we put down a whole bunch of zucchini, so we're hoping some zucchini will be out there also. So, uh, very fun. Yeah, so whenever I first met you, um, we were talking about Farm to School, right? Yes. And um, that's a new program that just started. Can you tell everyone about that? Just yes. how you guys are bringing it into the cafeteria, so, offering healthy options. Yeah, so DOE, um, they, they are working on a project called Farm to School, and they have um, invited us, uh, also Guahan Sustainab uh, Sustainable Culture, um, and the Farmers Co-op to help provide our, our yeah, basically lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, and microgreens into the schools. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to start very soon, um, but we've learned that, you know, we can't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need, the more the merrier. We don't want to compete. We're trying to encourage other farmers to grow more and even to, to basically kind of get away from that and also provide things that grow naturally here. Mm -hmm. You know, lettuce is a hard thing to it's... grow here with the heat. Um, so we want to say, you know, maybe like King Kong, trying to get that as a replacement for lettuce. Or, um, bok choy or, grows very well here. Right, even you can actually utilize Katagin, that as a... Yeah, different things Katagin. like that. So we, we were, we're working with um, Dr. Barber, UOG, Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. all trying to figure out a way how to supply more schools um, on a consistent basis. So right. that's something where... And just provide the healthier options. Just yes, try to lower yes. that, because uh, right now I think we're importing 90% still of produce to the island. And, uh, you know, if we drop that number down 5%, that, that would be a huge success for us, right. I feel, so. And we want to educate the kids, you yeah. know. Yeah, we, we wanna... I learned a lot when yeah. I was sitting there, and it was just the signing, I was like, wow. Yeah, definitely. And it tasted great. I did yes. take some vegetables home. <laughs> nice. Very yeah. good. It's perfect, yeah. Yeah. And um, so I want to go back to the CSA boxes, mm -hmm. just because I know you guys are, you guys, people can subscribe for them for yes. a gift, right? A holiday gift. Yes, which yes. This could be a really great option for people this uh, season. So if you could just tell us about that, because I, I was looking online at your site and I was like, oh wow, you can give someone a box of all these like yes. nice vegetables. So our, our main program, yeah, is um, a monthly subscription. Okay. You could subscribe to a small share for thirty-five dollars a week or a large share for fifty dollars a week. Um, you could do it every week or every other week, like I said, and um, you could always uh, stop it whenever you want or put a hold on it if you're going off island or if you need a break. Um, but um, again, there's a variety of different things in the boxes. You pick it up um, at one of our locations, Pumika Sales in Tamuning, uh, Jigo upon request, and then our main one is uh, Aganya. Um, right across from the post office. Um, we're there every Tuesday. That's a pickup location. Or you could pay extra for, um, for delivery. So we do that every Tuesday. Um, now for the, the holidays, mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's a $50 gift box. Uh, you get a crate, or your gift recipient gets a crate, a little um, a little uh, honey bear, uh, local honey mm-hmm. from local Island Honey, honey Bee. Yes. Ooh, and lo- honey local is so... Honey. I was just talking to someone about how honey is so great for you. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. And, you know, people think that it's sweet and it's something you shouldn't eat because of how sweet it is, but no, it's, it's actually like... They say like a spoonful of honey is actually really great for you every day. It's amazing as far as health benefits. I mean, those bees really are... For especially local honey because mm-hmm. they're, they're actually pollinating all of the local flowers. So if anybody has allergies, it actually builds up your immune system to um, yeah. uh, the pollen on island and everything. So it's a very, uh, very useful for and very That's what, delicious. so in Michigan, I would always, <laughs> I'm from Michigan, right? And I would always get really bad allergies, seasonal allergies. Mm-hmm. But then I would start um, taking a spoonful of honey and it, like you yeah, said, it, it made it a difference. Yeah. 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 And I, that's the great thing about local, fresh local produce. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's why these holiday boxes would be a great addition to a gift for some person, uh, somebody. Uh-huh. Um, not only are you getting something that they would use a lot more. Uh, would be utilized a lot better than like uh, some kind of a uh, gift or something like that. Uh, it's neutrally, uh, nutritionally dense. Uh, it's great for you. So, and you're supporting the local uh, and supporting the local farmers on island and mm-hmm. beekeepers. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. so but, I think um, that's super important. Yeah. So if you want to gift a box of local produce, you'll just go to our website from mm-hmm. tableguam.org. And uh, on the homepage there, you'll see us uh, send a box of local produce, and we'll deliver it for you oh, wow. on your mm-hmm. desired date and time frame, um, except for Christmas. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we're, but we're, we're down on Christmas Eve. Um, but but yeah, it'll so, make a great Christmas gift, so right, you can get it before. Exactly, exactly. So uh, that's something nice, something different than normal, you know, yeah. chocolates or candies. And you're supporting local farmers, and it's a healthy option. So with, um, you know, the farm to school, even the CSA boxes, was this ever part of the five-year plan or has it just kind of happened throughout um the time farm to school no it just kind of of um, unfolded naturally right exactly um yeah because we definitely there's a big market here there's a big demand for more local produce um and we are very minuscule growing we we have limited land um and resources so the main thing is to encourage other farmers out there or even just people interested in growing to to produce more because you know even hospitals want it uh-huh. schools want it mm-hmm. um, more stores want it uh, the community wants to see more I've people there's, there's on a, base there's um, a very it, big gap of local produce that you see actually in the markets or um, at other institution so we just really want to open that up to see local produce do you guys offer services for people to come take a tour of your farm so they can almost create their own gardens at home um occasionally we do um usually after rainy season because mm-hmm. uh yeah it gets a little muddy on the farm but um there is a an, a, an event an annual uh, may harvest event um that we we do welcome farm tours on the farm mm-hmm. um, um but yeah if, if interested just let us know and we'll give you a quick tour show you what we're doing and also encourage uh growing using the organic method yes. we think that's really important um y- using um natural um natural insecticides and yeah, rather than using any synthetic pesticides, pesticides. or uh, fertilizers or anything like that uh, we try to build our soil and actually um, do you use sunflowers uh, we use marigolds sunflowers? actually oh. we we do cover crops with uh, just like sunflowers we do marigolds yeah. and they actually build up our uh, soil um, uh, sun hemp they actually put nitrogen I mean that's the most amazing things that plants can do is yeah. actually uh, sequester nitrogen from the atmosphere and put it into our soil for future crops. I actually so. had just recently learned about sunflowers um, having, because you know, I always, you see sunflowers like, oh my God, they're so beautiful. You don't even think that they can actually fertilize the soil yes. and everything. They have so many, I mean, I guess powers in a sense, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, but I had learned just um, a couple years ago in Saipan, when I was in Saipan, because at their um, NMC, they have a farm that they just recently put up some sunflowers and yeah. I did a story on it and I was like, oh my gosh, oh, it's just, just so awesome. What plants can actually do. I mean, uh, I got to give a shout out to uh, Ernie Wustig. I mean, uh, he is farming a whole bunch of sweet corn on gravel. Uh, you know, he, he actually grew a whole bunch of plants, uh, let them die there and actually built up the soil. So, I mean, when a, when a plant dies, it basically turns into dirt. It turns into carbon. So, uh, just amazing what plants can do for our land. So, yeah really try to promote that and try to promote more uh, organic methods and uh, give back to our land. Uh, we've oh, taken yeah. so much from it, so uh, we just want to want people to give back to the land. Yeah, so. that's a beautiful yeah. way to put it. I love that. <laughs> I really like that. And that's what you guys are doing. Yes. Wow. yes. It's, uh, so what made you personally want to get involved and give back to the land? Um, you know, I actually started watching a lot of the like documentaries on Netflix. 
Um, okay. hung, hungry for change is actually the first one that got my, you know, me thinking how we're not eating. Um, I think there was a quote that we're eating, not eating food, but food like products. And it's so true. And we're eating all this processed food. I was eating a lot of bad food. And I wanted to start looking for local, local mm-hmm. produce and local food and starting to cook more and make my own. So I actually reached out to Farm to Table looking for local eggs. And I was like, oh, by the, by the way, are you hiring? Like, that would be kind of fun. <laughs> and they weren't at the time. But then a couple months later, we had received the award for our grant that we had, the five-year grant funded by Administration for Native Americans. And they needed, um, uh, yeah, they needed a community awareness project assistant. And so um, luckily, I was hired on, and I've been with them ever since. So I, I can't imagine doing anything different or being in a different industry. It's... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging, but it's the, the rewarding. You got, what was it, hungry for change. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Those eggs got you hungry for change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just by eating right and actually um, eating whole and non-processed. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, clean eating. It, it's done so much uh, for us, I, I feel. Um, and uh, we wanted to produce more, and we saw how limited there was with local produce. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's one thing that Farm to Table is really uh, trying to do right now is to get more out there. And you've, um, you've always been interested in plant science and yes. botany and growing, trying to grow different I mean, I, I've known a lot of uh, Western uh, methods, you know, using synthetic fertilizers, synthetic pesticides mm-hmm. and things like that. And um, as I got into this position, I was just a, a farm assistant, a farm apprentice. And I started learning more and more and realizing how you don't need to spend money on all those inputs. You can act, The plants will actually do it themselves. Yeah. So I just... So you developed a green, green thumb, absolutely. right? <laughs> well, <laughs> and... Uh, it's all, it's the trial and error. Okay. There's, there's a lot of trial and error, and we're always learning. Yes. We're always yeah. learning. Okay. So, yeah, so you've it, always kind of had this passion? Yes, yeah. Uh, oddly enough, yes. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, it just, when you harvest and you actually see the... Fruits of your labor. Yeah, <laughs> fruits of your labor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, it's a lot more pride than, you know, um, than working a nine to five. Right. I, I love it so much, uh, just being on the farm and actually uh, working outside. It's really hot, <laughs> but uh, it's very worth it. So, well, I mean, you both have listened to your passions, then you know, and some people don't all the time, so mm-hmm. that's great. And then you're able to make a difference with it, which is essentially why I wanted to bring you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We appreciate it. yeah, of course. And um, just because, because you know, I'm hearing about the you know, you're eating healthier. Mm-hmm. So, for people that think, like, oh, I don't want to be on a diet all the time by eating this, how could you almost encourage them that? You're not putting yourself on a diet. In, in it's a not. Year. It's a sounds cliche, but it's a lifestyle change. Mm-hmm. The more you eat fresh and and good things, the more you're gonna crave it rather than the bad things. Um, and of course, you know you're, you can't be perfect all the times, but any little change really really helps. Um, from my experience, um, I was gonna say you had mentioned that right that yeah. you were that you had were not eating as healthy. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. What kind of change did you realize or see within yourself? Um, of course, weight loss. That wasn't yeah. my ultimate yeah. goal. It was just to feel better, but like weight loss. Um, yeah. And healthy. even my hair and my skin <laughs> I even say, felt yeah. better <laughs> when I was eating um, more um, local produce and, and more real food. What about energy? Exactly. Oh, yeah. I was oh, yeah. just going to say, I mean, um, uh, our mornings always consist of like a uh, coffee, you know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I know. You know <laughs> we still do. We still do. Still do. <laughs> But uh, waking up and having uh, just a glass of water with a little bit of lemon in it, um, uh-huh. that actually still boosts up a lot of energy. And uh, it's just crazy how, uh, how lemon water can actually be a lot better. Or uh, calamansi water. Or calamansi water oh, can yeah. be a lot better than a cup of coffee in the morning. Uh, it keeps your energy going throughout the mm-hmm. day. You don't have that crash. So, right. yeah, I mean, that's a huge uh, aspect right there. Yeah, eating that's it. Because a lot of times people will think, and, you know, I'm guilty of it myself, but, oh, I, I want to drink lemon water for a detox. But it does energize if you start your day with it. Mm-hmm. So um, rather than, you know, maybe changing the mindset a little bit, mm-hmm. which I should do myself at times, but right, right. Um, seeing it, not seeing it as a detox, but, you know, like you said, a life change, a lifestyle yeah, it, change. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, sacrifice going into it. I mean, what? We're all used to getting fast food and, uh, you know, something quick, something easy. We, we, we're busy half the time. And it does take a lot of time to meal prep and actually does, but uh, make great meals. But It is fun to experiment, um, you know, getting used to things that grow here. Of course, lettuce, you know, you know what to do with that. Salads, wraps, sandwiches. Mm-hmm. But learning, you know, more ways how to cook, you know, with green papaya or cooking banana. Things that, um, you know, are, are tr- you know, traditionally have been used um, on Guam for, you know, <laughs> Quite some time. There's a lot of people out right now that are actually making some amazing dishes, all plant-based. Uh, so, uh, 
I don't know, Jenny? Uh, yeah, yeah, Jenny Kaufman. Jenny yeah. Kaufman. Uh, they're about to open. And they're again, about to open, yeah, yeah a vegan restaurant. And it's a big uh, oh, really? with most of her items and in, include uh, locally grown produce. And um, a lot of it comes from local farmers. Even people just give it to her because what she's doing is so awesome and it tastes good. It's and like, it kind of you opens serious? your eyes to made what... Out of- Plants? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? This? Uh, okay. Okay. Meatless? All right. I'll dig it. Well, even they have the, the what is it, the Impossible Burgers now, too? Yes. The, where the people are going meatless? Exactly. Or the Beyond? The Beyond yeah. Meat. Yeah. Or Beyond, Beyond Meat. Meat. Yeah. 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 And, it's all um, pea protein. Yeah. 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 And it, but it tastes the same, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, I mean, so that's a Which that's might a be kind of scary. <laughs> it's still it's better than actually going through corn. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a whole bunch of... Uh, corn syrup, corn starch, and things like that mm-hmm. to kind of move away from that and uh, get more into leafy greens. And uh, leafy greens are made out of chlorophyll. I, that's so great for the body. And, and lot, microgreens are, are really amazing, too. And we have a, a handful of really good uh, microgreen growers on island. Um, they're on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I would recommend to check them out. Microgreens are filled with nutrients. So we have um, a comment that so whenever people come up we like to give them shout sure. outs and also we have a question within it so yes, yes. um this is from debbie davis she's saying hello to us all she's hi. watching from kentucky hi debbie and um she's saying that fresh homegrown is the best that's why i grow my own and can freeze food to eat yes mm-hmm. and she also said this is a great program thank you oh, thank you debbie. so her question was do they allow kids to have a small garden at school to teach them how to grow and maintain fresh food mm-hmm. very educational or maybe this is part of a plan or a new right. something else. Um, we've um, we did um, do something years ago with Harry S. Truman um, and uh, in partnership with UOG, and we did help um, maintain their garden and educate the kids. Um, our last five-year project wasn't so much focused on the school gardens as it was uh, to actually um, encourage. Uh, uh, basically um, the economy and getting more farmers on Guam. So that might be something that we're interested in. Well, or the we might... Farm to School program, we're yeah, uh, going to start we're... going to the schools and actually uh, hopefully help start a, a school garden. Okay. Um, that's the... something that we want to do for sure. Right. We uh, do need more volunteers, though, yes. and there needs to be maybe more education with the teachers on how to maintain the garden. Um, but we would love to do something like that eventually. We really want to get the kids involved because once you get the kids involved, start young. Uh, yeah, grow. exactly. Once they start growing their own food, they're going to be more inclined to actually eat it uh, mm-hmm. rather than just serving them a, a bowl of lettuce. Uh, but if they actually feel the pride that I feel of actually growing <laughs> yeah. it themselves, and you know, they'll be more inclined and they'll realize how delicious it and is. And there's a lot of grants out there actually that um, schools can apply for to get funding <clears throat> to start school gardens. So I would encourage. Uh, uh, yeah. So you mentioned that, volunteers, right? Mm-hmm. You need volunteers. How can people volunteer if they're interested? Um, well, volunteer. The schools need volunteers oh. a lot. If you're interested in, um, if if you're interested in having a school garden, there needs to be vol- more volunteers to maintain the gardens at school. But, um, but on as, the farm, we always welcome volunteers, as, yeah. depending on um, conditions of the weather and everything like that. Right. But usually after rainy season. Mm-hmm. Um, usually on Monday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday mornings, afternoons. And they um, just get occasional contact. weekends, but yeah, just contact us and we'll, we'll give you more information. And Debbie says, thank you for answering my question. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Welcome, Debbie. Debbie, thank mm-hmm. you for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, so um, is there anything else either of you would like to add before we head out of here? Just uh, do you guys have any upcoming events? Um, n- no events. Um, just trying to really work on getting growing more lettuce and trying to get them into trying to get into schools. But um, I would probably just say um, try try and shop local more. Um, Support your local farmers. Not only ours, um, but also any roadside stands you might mm. see, or try and you know at me even at Paylist or cost Costulus if it says local, maybe try you know changing your recipes up and try using that locally grown produce because um, it's fresher, it tastes better, you're supporting the farmers, helping the economy on Guam. Mm-hmm. Um, and the we're um, nutritionally dense. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we're uh, uh, lessening our dependence on imports. So that's mm-hmm. huge. Okay, um, is there a farmer's market that you guys are at? We, at we have our, our own, own like uh, farmer's market, farm stand, where um, after we pack the subscription boxes, we sell whatever uh, is extra mm-hmm. uh, okay. in front of the Aganya post office every Tuesday from 4 to 6.30. Okay. Some of it comes from our farm, and again, some of it comes from other local farmers. Every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if, those, if people don't know, head there on Tuesdays? Yes. All right. Awesome. Anything else you'd like to add? No, that's it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both for joining me. Thank I really appreciate so it and Thanks educating me. Yeah. I just learned so much. Good, good, yeah, good. Definitely. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for watching. I'm Adriana Katera for The Greater Good.